What's happening, friends? Welcome to Podcast Unlocked, episode 399. It's IGN's weekly Xbox show. Uh, one last good roll in the studio. We're back. <laughs> yeah. I'm Ryan McCaffrey, Destin Legary, Tamara yeah. Wright, Miranda Sanchez on the end. Miranda, Hello. why are we in the studio? Why would we do such a thing? If you haven't seen already, which you should <laughs> watch if you can, we have a special guest. Yes. Rod Ferguson. Hey. Studio head at the Coalition, all things Gears of War, or just Gears. Gears. Let's, let's specify I that. I made that mistake a few times. I'm like, Gears of War. Gears. <laughs> it's it's great to have you here. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like being the last one in the studio, which is kind of cool. I don't know if I'm the cause of it, but I'm glad that I'm here. And yeah, we're burning it all down. because I know. <laughs> and I'm a little disappointed that I'm on 399 and not 400, but whatever. <laughs> well, just call it 400. It's okay. Fine. We'll just skip it. No one will even notice. Okay. There was no 399. 399.5 and we round up. I'm good. Yeah. It's all good. Uh, but it's great to have you here. We're covering Gears 5 all month long as part of IGN First Miranda Sanchez. You had a chance to go up to the Coalition before yes. E3, see Escape. You've been rolling out coverage all month long. Yeah. Uh, Destin and I got to play it at E3, had an awesome time. Mm -hmm. I learned that uh, I made it way too easy. I didn't turn on enough modifiers. Yeah. I was the host. I was I a did bad the host. the opposite. All the modifiers <laughs> are on. I was with players who hadn't really played. And you're playing with two randos. Yeah, I watched yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I, was like, uh, I still had a blast, though. I actually yeah. really liked it. Yeah. Okay, good. good. I was really disappointed that you didn't make it harder because I knew exactly where to go because we had played so much for. <laughs> she wouldn't the stop IGN. until she beat it because that was the thing. Is we always like it's more fun to start harder and then have to yeah. dial it down than to go the other way. So it took us like nine times or more to get through it. Maybe, eventually. yeah, so, for the first time. But then when we added one more modifier, we got it. Like yeah. we we kept getting it. It was like just figuring out that first cycle and then once you got it you're good so, so uh how'd you feel about e3 this year big presence for you guys yeah i got to do stagecraft i get to go yes. under the stage through illusion and magic uh <laughs> and so that was kind of cool it was really unique for us because we've never done multiplayer on the stage before and so we felt like we had landed campaign so strongly the previous year we're just going like okay you know how do we keep this momentum going all the way to september and we'd gone dark for a year, you know, yeah. and because it was another thing we want to do is like part of the Gears 5 process was challenge expectations was kind of the, what we call the commander's intent was like, OK, how can we challenge expectation, whether in the product or also in marketing and PR? And we felt like, you know, trying to start a fire, essentially a hype fire a year before or 18 months before and then having to reheat, reheat, reheat all the way through is just... Hype fire, I'm, gonna, I'm stealing that. Hype <laughs> fire is my favorite new phrase. Um, and so this reheating thing is just like hard. And, and so you have to like get everybody excited and then let everybody cool down and get everybody excited and then everybody cool down. And so we just felt like, okay, let's just go dark for a year and wait till the next E3 and then we'll just hit every month after that. So that's why we're doing like, you know, we did Escape in June and Versus in July and, and Horde in August and back to campaign in September. It's just, okay, let's just keep it going, keep it going. And so... Um, so that was the reason we did Escape. We felt like Escape was going to be on the floor. Let's put it on the stage. Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, really great reception. I think some people wanted campaign. I, I, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I, I just wasn't aware that people kind of treated E3 as like six minutes on stage and not the whole week because we felt like we had a lot to talk about and we did we did gameplay after the briefing. We did gameplay, you know, through Miranda's piece and we had lots of ways of talking about it. People were like, but in your six minutes, I didn't see this. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, we talked, we talked about that here. Like, we thought you guys did a tremendous job of sort of pulling the, you know, showing a new thing right. last year while also giving people the single player they want in the form of, you know, you did the, the little switcheroo the, with, with Gears Pop. Right. And like, oh my God, what is the, oh, thank God. Okay, Gears 5, there's a, <laughs> there, is, there is a proper Gears scheme here too in addition to this other new thing. Right. But uh, yeah, it almost seemed like you guys kind of got, obviously not intentionally victimi victimized a little bit by uh, the same thing that bit Blizzard with uh, everybody who's so psyched for Diablo 4 right. at BlizzCon and then like, all right, Diablo Immortal mobile thing. Okay, but there's going to be a there's going to be a reveal for a proper Diablo 4. Oh, it didn't happen and right. then everybody gets real mad. So, um, you know, in hindsight, do, do you think maybe you, you would have shown maybe a little bit of campaign or No, I think I I believe in what we did and I think as we play it over the week, like once people got over the 6 minute thing cuz yeah. like in 6 minutes trying to show like just let's play escape for 20 minutes in the 6 minute window doesn't right. make sense and if you show trying to show campaign in six minutes, you're gonna it's gonna be someone taking cover and shooting, and like you have to find like really differential things to move the needle, which gets really hard in that time slot. So the fact that was the reason we like called our shot essentially. The reason we said, hey, 
today, I know this might be a little bit frustrating to you because I'm only talking about escape, but we're going to talk about this, you know, we're going to talk about verses in July and forward and, and let you know what the scope of the product is and let you know when we're going to talk about it. So if you're impatient now, just give it time. So in September, we'll throw the campaign in the hyperwave. Ah, real quick, nice, right? exactly, exactly. <laughs> Stoke that hype fire. Nice. Um, yeah, it's, I, I kind of want to back up with you a second here okay. too, because I haven't talked to you, at least on the air, since, I think, since Gears 4 shipped. Yeah. You, know, so yeah, yeah. you go away and you go make a new game, and right. then I get to see every three years or so. <laughs> right. And I appreciate those opportunities. And, and uh, I reviewed Gears of War 4 for us. I loved it. Uh, I, I thought it was... Um, I drew parallels in my review to uh, Star Wars Episode 7, right. which obviously... You were you're you're making that at the same time J.J. Abrams is making. It's not like you're obviously trying to to sort of follow a similar yeah. beat, but right. you know I, I I really liked the way you sort of brought the the new generation in, sort of on the back of the old. Right. Um, how what was the the postmortem in the studio for Gears of War four as far as accomplishing what you set out to do, or were there things where you went, oh, we could have done that better? Or, I'm sort of curious your the internal review of Gears of War 4, because, again, we loved it so much. Right. Yeah, I think our biggest thing was just that we sort of um, felt like people were going to sort of judge us more critically around being the new caretakers of the franchise. Right. Like, like that happened in 343 with Halo right. 4. And so going into it, we're like, okay, out of this this team, only three of us, uh, Greg Mitchell, cinematics director, and Prince Arrington, is QA director, and myself, we were the only ones who'd made a Gears game before. And so we felt like, okay, everybody's going to be looking to us going like, I don't know if I trust these guys, so we better see something that we recognize as Gears. And right. so when we went in, and we purposely were like, you know, because we'd have a bunch of people who'd never made it before. We'd be like, here, you've never seen this in a Gears game before. Like, let's go super vertical and all this stuff, right? And we were just like, hey, how about we show, be... how about we do <laughs> Gears, like, let's do Gears right first. Yeah. Mm. And so that, and, but when I started doing press, uh, near, as we're getting close to the end and getting ready to ship, as I started doing press to get the hype fire going, <laughs> uh, it became very apparent to me that people were not having those questions. They were just like, yeah, 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 like, you know, <laughs> And it's like, okay, that's cool, but now tell us about this thing. And I was like, oh, crap. Like, I was expecting a lot more, like, prove us that you can do it. And so I think, I think in, in retrospect, I think we, we probably could have pushed the envelope more in terms of where we could have gone with it. Um, you know, like, I, if, we, if Gears had stayed with Epic, and I was still at Epic, and we were doing now, okay, here's, like, the fifth version at Epic, I think naturally you would have saw a lot more changes because yeah. you'd say, like, okay, we see your path, and you want to change a lot of stuff. But when you give it to a new studio who's trying to prove themselves, it's kind of hard to go, like, no, it's first person and everybody's like what the hell you don't even know what you're doing right like so that was so that was probably one of the things that we looked at it most and that's why we sort of when, that's why I said my commander's intent for five was challenge expectations okay what are the things we can do because I always talk about this I've said this before in other discussions around sequels are about sort of uh, managing the betrayal of expectations right, right? and Absolutely. so if you don't betray it enough they go like, well, this is the same game. Why am I buying a new version when it's the same game? And if I betray you too much, then you go like, well, this is not even Gears. Like, why, why would I even buy this? It's not even the same franchise. So somewhere in the middle lies enough betrayal, but not too much, that you get what we call surprise and delight. Like, if we go like, oh, I didn't even know I wanted that. Yeah. And so you get there. And so I, I feel like that's what we've been pushing with Challenge Expectation is how can we play with the formula and how can we make the game feel more contemporary and try new things that have never been seen in Gears before, but not go so far people go like, well, that now that's a Halo game, or now that's a Call of Duty game, or whatever. Like, we're still being true to Gears, and that's really what we're doing with Five. And probably, and the other thing was just what you saw is the realization when we were kind of done, and I've used this discussion before too, like Mad Max Fury Road was really Furiosa's story, and Mad Max was the facilitator of her story. Mm -hmm. And kind of looking back and going like, that's what we did with four, was that it was really Kate's story and about saving her mom, yeah. and JD was there to facilitate it. And so that was part of the, you know, was this organic process to go like, you know what, it's actually more impactful to live the story than to watch the story. So rather than being JD watching Kate go through a bunch of stuff, why not be Kate and go through it yourself? And so that was where, again, why we made a change in five. Did, well, go I, ahead, Dustin. I, I can really respect that you want to stay true to the heart of Gears, but I'm also curious if anyone's ever done any experimentation. Your game 
designers, did you ever add like a jetpack? And then you're just like, <laughs> no, 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 like that's fun, but we cannot do that. Yeah, even just like your comment about verticality was just very funny. It's yeah. like, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just want to get John DiMaggio on the <laughs> Yeah, it's we tried a bunch of different things, and 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 some things stick and some things don't. And that was one of the things that when we first were developing the at the very beginning, as we were going from four to five, uh, we had some bunch of prototypes, and, and basically it went away for Christmas break. Um, and when we came back, I was like, you know, there's there's this thing um, that's really stuck with me now over the last three weeks. That this is the reason I'm really excited to come back and get back at this is because of this thing. And so that was, and that helped push, you know, the game in a slightly different direction. And so it's that kind of stuff that kind of also keeps you energized creatively. It's like, oh, we're going to take this in a different way and we'll see how people react to it. You mentioned taking on the mantle, uh, and then I mentioned 343 and it made me think, did, do you talk to anybody at 343 when, when you're, when you're doing Gears 4? No, they just, they don't allow communication at all. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know. no, so, yeah, I'm sort of curious because, you know, yeah, they, they went through, you know, I, like, I've, I've said this publicly and I very much mean it. I think 343 got an unfair rap from the community in general for, I thought Halo 4 was a better game than a lot of people gave them, gave credit for sure. just because they weren't Bungie. Sure. So, were, were you able to kind of... See that and, and talk to, uh, yeah. to Bonnie and the, and the team at all about that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we have a lot of people, friends at 343, and, and talk to them about, like, and because part of it is franchise management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that they felt, and not to help support the decision we were doing with Four, which is like, do it right before you do it different. And that was what they had to do as well, as they were trying to be like, okay, we can make a Halo game before we go and make it crazy. Um, and so that was sort of part of the thing. It was like when we believed in that strategy, and I still think in the hindsight, I, I still think it probably was the right strategy that if we were going to mess up in any way, the best way to mess up is make something that's true and loyal to what it is you're building. Um, and so I think it was the right thing to because it gives us now permission to go and do different things. Absolutely. Um, so now, Gears 5. Yes. You, I think it was after E3 last year when you unveiled the game, uh, you and I had a brief Twitter exchange about the name and right. and so I thought you know that was so long ago most people probably neither forgot it or never saw it. Why drop the of war? <laughs> I mean, I, like I'm genuinely curious. You know, you talk about franchise management and you've sure. got probably SEO on Gears of War. You've right. got familiarity. Like, is that an easy decision? Do a lot, do marketing people push back on you? Absolutely. How many sign offs? <laughs> no, I, I'm genuinely curious about this. Yeah, it, I mean, so it started back at Gears Four, um, and because we were switching from you know one two and three and judgment as part of the main franchise and going to sort of our the next gen gears of war the next generation i wanted it to be gears four then and if you actually look at the e3 imagery of the poster of jd where that doesn't show his face it's just the armor and the tease poster for e3 that year was just gears four i remember that and that was me trying to get my way i was like <laughs> i want it to be gears four uh, and they were like, eh, I don't know. And, but we, so we said, oh, well, at least try it with the tease image. And then when push came to shove, um, the discussion with marketing was, well, actually, I think on the box, we want to keep it Gears of War. And so I lost that particular fight in that moment. And so I was like, okay, you know, that makes sense. I understand why we're doing that. And Does that then, go up to Aaron Greenberg? No. No, it, it, um, Guy Welch, who's our, uh, the product manager for us, is like, it's basically... The thing I think people don't realize, and this is just an amazing thing of being able to make games inside of Microsoft, is that there is no really autocratic, like there's no voice from God that comes down and says, yeah. you thou shalt do, <laughs> right? And so Phil and, and Matt, Booty, um, they just say like, hey, run your studio and make your game. And so I don't have the, you must do this for the platform, or you must do this in your game, or you must do this this way. Like That's not how they work. And so I'm really appreciative of that. And it's also nice to be like a three hour drive away because I also get a little bit extra independence <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. But so we did that. And then so when five comes around, and again, we have this challenge expectations kind of uh, commander's intent. I was like, okay, now I'm on it my way. Like this is like, if we're gonna be challenging expectations, I wanna do it to the game, but I also wanna do it in marketing, I wanna do it in PR, I wanna do it in everything. And so I pushed even harder to be just Gears 5, and they relented and we said, okay, we're gonna put it on the box that way. And, and But the thing what we're doing, because we have such a big franchise, is that it's still Gears of War as the franchise. Yeah. Um, and also, and you know, we also looked at it as a family of products. So for the first time this year, we're gonna have Gears Pop and Gears Tactics and Gears 5, and the idea of Gears of War Pop and Gears of War Tactics and Gears of War 5 just felt like it was kind of too much. So I liked, I liked the Gears Pop, Gears Tactics, Gears 5-ness of it. And so it was just an abbreviation to make it feel more contemporary. I was going to ask you about Gears Tactics. Uh, we didn't 
Didn't see anything on no. it uh, this year, which is, you know, I'm sure there's good reason. You're showing Gears 5, you're showing Escape, a game's in development, but um, yeah. what? Uh, how is progress on that going? Because, yeah, we haven't had a chance to play it yet. You know, right. it was shown off a year ago, and it's been pretty quiet ever since, so what's, uh, what's the story on that one? Yeah, it's moving along. Like, we want everything to have its own time. And so that was actually another particular interesting sort of behind the scenes was that People didn't want me uh, to announce all three games at last E3. They felt like, okay, maybe you're going to dilute the message, or you're going to like people, or it's going to be too soon. And again, you'll start the hype fire, but you yeah. won't be able to keep it burning. Um, but I just felt like one of the things as you get up to like five, as you get up to a bigger number, and as the franchise, you know, you get this like, well, is the franchise dying? Is it decaying? Like, how is it aging? On you know, how is it aging? And I want to just reinforce like. Microsoft is tripling down on Gears of War. We're not, we got like, you know, with our multiple comic book series and multiple novels and the movie and three games. Like, they did buy it for $2 billion, so they're not just going to let it sit on a shelf. <laughs> it was actually a dollar. It was fine. Um, Does but, Mark Rain know that? <laughs> so that idea, so I wanted to get all three out just to say like, hey, we're, we're alive and fine and yep. we're doing well. And that there will actually be, as we're trying to grow the franchise in a mobile space and a PC space and console and also transmedia, which I hate that word, but you know what I mean, the, in linear media. And so we, that was the reason I really pushed for that announce. But what it does mean is things like, you know, tactics is going to have its own time to shine. And because, I, again, I don't want to be always talking about three all the time, sure. you know, three different games at the same time all the time. So it was like, oh, tactics will fall back this time because we're so, so close to Shipping Gears 5, too close <laughs> to Shipping Gears 5, that, you know, it's time to let it sort of rise to the top. I feel like Gears is... Uh, really well suited to a strategy game in the same way that Halo was. We've been talking about that a lot too. We're like, we want to try this because it makes a lot of sense in like how the movement in gears is and just. It is unbelievable. Cool. Like so, when you think of like a, the cooking term of a, you know a reduction, like mm -hmm. when you take like if you take like red wine and you reduce it down to like that's what a tactics game is for gears. It's like it's it's gears at its most like core. The idea of the way that fronts work and the way that flanking works and the way that taking cover works is the way that you do movement and you move uh, squad and you know soldier by soldier to lay out plans and and it's like it's like. It's concentrated gears. It's sort of like, you know, all the water has been extracted and it's all, it's just pure, I, pure gears. I had no idea how much I wanted Gears Tactics until I saw it. <laughs> and I cannot wait to play that game. Yeah. Like, as a big XCOM fan, like, it's hitting a lot of those same notes. So I, I can't wait till you guys ship it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to people getting their hands on it too. Because it's just like when you play it, like I said, it just like, it's just pure essence of gears. And it's, uh, it's, it was announced for PC only. Right. Which, you know, hey, it's fine. Microsoft is, on lots of platforms, they want to put games sure. everywhere. But we do officially have keyboard and mouse support now sure. on Xbox. Is there is there any thought to, to maybe push into the console at some point? Yeah, it's really, I mean, we've been trying to find the right messaging for that. Like, I think the, um, the right messaging, I think it was really more around PC first. Um, because the thing that we wanted to make sure that people were understanding with Tactics was that it's not a, um, a console game that we're porting to right. PC. And so that this is being designed and built and developed on PC. Um, and so it will come to PC first. But as you see with Gears 5 being on Steam and on and Win 10 is also PC. And like you said, mouse and keyboard. Like, Tactics will probably, you know, make its way to console. Like, that's why we're saying more. It's, it's more of a PC first thing. Good. Because we just know that... It's not just about what platform you're on, it's about sort of the, the idea, the ideology you bring to developing it. And we wanted PC players to know, like, this started and was built on PC and designed on PC and everything about it is PC. And then, in fact, we're actually going to have to put a bunch of work into changing the UI and the way that you interact with the game in order to do it on console. My hope is that we do something like Diablo 3, which is, like, I feel is actually better I on I agree console. with you, actually, yeah. I, I prefer to play Diablo on, on console. And so I, I hope that... As we, you know, have to take that UI and move it over to con a controller that we can actually do as well as Diablo did. Um, so I'm, I'm curious: is is Gears Five the middle part of a trilogy? Have you guys laid that out, or uh, we don't think about it that way okay. anymore? Like, so we just sort of, I think we, I think our, we use the word saga. Right. Now, Same thing Halo did. Yeah, we just like we felt weird. Like, obviously, stories work better as a beginning, middle, and end. One, two, and three, and so there's ways to think about that, but. We always have to look at like what is the success of an individual title? Is it this warrant going on to somewhere else? Do you need to pivot and do something? You know, like yeah. so. We just try to tell the best story we can in the moment, and some you know we try to leave a little bit of room. The the necklace thing at the end of you know four was meant to help you know oh yeah you know inform five, and so you kind of want to make sure there's at least avenues to go explore, but we, there's never a guarantee that, okay, this is definitely six, and this is definitely the story of six, so and those sorts of things. Do you guys have like several books planned? It's like, here are all the paths we could take. Well, you just have to look at where you where you 
give yourself. Like one of the things that when we're being, building the franchise, we love this thing, the notion of negative space. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times when we're building, we don't want to fill in everything because we want writers to come in. I use the example Asheville Fields. So in the first game, you're in the helicopter, Carmine says, are you Marcus Fink's one from Asheville Fields, the Battle of Asheville Fields? And he goes, yes. And he's like, cool. And all we knew is that was the name of the battle and Marcus was a hero, but we didn't know any details. And so when Karen Travis comes along and says, you know, we're going to get her to write a book, she's like, what do you want me to write about? And we're like, well, we don't know. And then we're like, well, <laughs> then we think about it some more and then we're like, well, what about this battle of Asheville Fields? She says, okay, great. What happens? What is it? And we're like, mm, yeah, I got nothing for you. <laughs> it's like, it's all negative space. All I can tell you is Marcus is a hero. And I think we knew like maybe Carlos died or, and that kind of thing. And so she went off and, and because we had created negative space and we didn't, predefine it for her, she was able to, as, as a creator, come and, and contribute more than we would have ever done in the 20 minutes we would have spent in a boardroom trying to figure out what it is. And so we find that the more that we can avoid locking something early, the more opportunity we have for comic book writers and, and novelists and game writers to come in and find new places to attach on. So a lot of times it's about, hey, we created an opportunity for negative space. Do we want to go define that? No, move on, right? Right, and we've talked a lot about that in uh, regard to the movie, too, and the comic book, and right. with Hive Busters, and yeah. what you guys want to do with the movie, and having an alternate universe so that the film writers can actually like, make a good gear Which, signal. to clarify, by the way, there's been a bunch of pushback on that. When your article went up, there were people yeah. talking about, like, oh, I'm really disappointed because it's alternate reality means it's not about the game characters, and that's not what this means. It yeah, just... I also wrote that it's still about Marcus, but, you know, yeah, yeah, I was <laughs> like, saying... there's, there's core things in here that need to happen to make it Gears of War. Authentic to Gears yeah, of War. I'm not saying what's going to yeah. happen in the story. All I'm saying is that we are not by saying it's alternate reality. I'm not saying it doesn't have game characters in it. I'm just saying right. that it does. It's not in the game canon. Something that happens yeah. in the movie doesn't affect the games, and something that happens in the games doesn't affect the movie. Yeah. Right. So either way, but it doesn't mean that Marcus isn't in the movie. That so I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you while you're sitting here in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dave Bautista has publicly, repeatedly lobbied. He <laughs> wants that role. He wants to be in that movie. Right. Uh, I know you're saying you're, you're trusting the filmmakers to do their thing. Yeah. How much say do you have? How much influence do you have? <laughs> and is he, d does he have your, your uh, support? Yeah, I think Dave is great. I think Dave would be awesome uh, in that role. I, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have casting control uh, <laughs> of what we do with that and whether we have uh, the character that he would play. But um, yeah, I think it's awesome. The fact that there's somebody like that is passionate about that role in the franchise is really exciting to us. And so, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Do you have a dream cast? Like, a if you could pick cast. anybody? Uh, Sega uh, console from several years ago. <laughs> I do have a dream cast. Sama <laughs> Delamigo, I still have the Maracas. Um, yeah, I mean, there's stuff that, but the, what's interesting to me is when you talk to the movie producers, and then I won't name names, but they were talking about, like, oh, this person reached out once they heard that we were making a movie, and this person, people you wouldn't think of, would go, like, oh, hey, if you're making that movie, I want to kind of talk to you about it. And it would be like, oh, that's surprising. Like, so there's, there's a bunch of people out there that know about Gears that maybe you wouldn't necessarily think know about Sylvester Gears. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is. Marcus, Marcus Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. He could uh, be Hoffman. Oh, uh, okay. Could okay. Be good. There you go. I don't think that's a compliment to Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> that's that's like getting a little older than you want him to be. But he, he's like seventy something. <laughs> he's doing old Rambo right now. <laughs> that is true. Uh, yeah. So I think there's one of the things I said in the, uh, to Miranda, and I, and I really mean is that it has to be a good movie first and a Gears movie second. I think that's one of the places where video game movies make the mistake is they try to be so true to fan service and so true to what the game is that they kind of lose the notion that it actually has to be a really good story and with really good characters and, and so that's one of the things we're really pushing on is like hey um, and you know we've gone through some cycles with writers and, and getting the right treatment and now uh, and on the script and stuff is like finding like let's make it a good story and then we'll and it's easy to kind of make that a really good war story become a gear story and that's kind of what we're trying to do. So there is a a version of a script right now? We're working on it, yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, sign me up. I mean, I'm signed up already. <laughs> like, very yeah, Baird. Bear. Bear. He could be Baird. That'd be good. Um, That'd be good. Uh, so then is there is there uh, an arc narratively to bring it back to the game? Yeah. Uh, past Gears 5 then? At this point, well, I mean, there is. You always have to kind of be forward looking. You can't. You're not gonna. There's no paint yourself into a corner and right. go, like, oh crap, we don't have anywhere <laughs> to go. So again, in terms of the creating negative space, we've created as we laid out this story in uh, working with Tom Bissell, our writer. Um, like we've laid out opportunities. And so as we look to the future, and so if this is received well, um, then we can say like, okay, where do we want to take that? You know, and so th there, there's there's negative space out there to explore. For so sure. four focused was on JD, five is Kate, is six going to be a Dell game? 
It's an interesting thought. I mean, you know. You know, it's a, a good <laughs> logical conclusion. Yeah. Um, on that note, by the way, yeah. if you ever kill Marcus Phoenix, <laughs> you will never be invited back ever again. Yeah, there's like all caps on this meeting. It's all it's caps. Just, You'd better not rod. Different. You better not rod. Yeah, John has said the same thing to me. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was in a, I, we were at, uh, doing a recording session with John and he just sort of reached over and he's like, um, so if you kill me, you've got to give me some time because I have house payments I got to make. <laughs> 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 I was like, okay, John, got that. He so, is in, I, I have a seven-year-old daughter. He is in so many cartoons that yeah. I just like, you know, she just puts stuff on and I'm like, wait. Oh, that's John DiMaggio. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, even the 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 Rada Rada guy. Did you ever watch that the the, the cooking the show? It's oh, what's the name? Oh, it's I don't a think cartoon. I know that one. Yeah, there's this cartoon that is it's all about it's all food. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the name of the cartoon. Anyway, but he's this rock guy, and he doesn't say anything except Rada Rada. He just goes Rada 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 Rada. <laughs> Actually, and, I think yeah. I know what you're talking about, but I forget the name. Yeah, exactly. He got eighteen million dollars for that. Rock. <laughs> 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 well, his newest thing is like uh, Disenchantment on Netflix, right? Where he's the, he's the king. And but you can pick up little things. But the same thing with Fred Tattasher, like, because Fred is everywhere. Mm -hmm. He's the voice of the Hulk in all the movies and yeah. all this stuff. And so you just sort of, I, I start cluing into, like, wait, is that Fred? Like, I think I hear Fred. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Did, uh, was John able to get through the the my F and tomatoes line in in one take? Or did because I, like, I was cracking up. I love that when, so when, much. <laughs> you mean the Easter egg? No, it, when, uh, toward, what is it, the first act of the game? Yeah. Yeah. Four? yeah, but there's an Easter egg, because there's a whole, did you get, you're talking about his rant? Because there's a, there's a two things where... Yeah, where he's like, my effing tomatoes. Yeah, that was just, that's... That's that, the normal part. That, That's an outtake. Like, that's not a... Oh, really? So yeah. good. So that's, he does it all the time, and there's some, there's times <laughs> that I, and I missed ones out of four, which we were trying to go back, because we record so many times, they're trying to find all the little outtakes. Because he's, when there's a downtime, when we're picking takes, or we're working on something, he'll start, do, he'll just talk, right? And so... It, he did. He did a whole. Say, he stays in character while he does that. Well, he just entertains. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just, and so John will just entertain you, and so he'll just. He, he did a whole. He started doing Dear Diary, and it was just like, <laughs> and so over the course of like multiple sessions, he would just ask Marcus going like, Dear Diary, today, you know, because he was just alone as a hermit, he was just like, today I watered the tomato. Like, but, this, but so, and I was trying to get those things like collected, and we never actually did, but the one we got was his explosion one, which is just like, he just goes off sometimes in character, and the whole thing about shooting the tomatoes, where he's like, there's, because he breaks the fourth wall, because there's no Home Depot out here, and you're like, okay, <laughs> there's certain things you can't say on Sarah, you know, and that's one of the things we always have to, because you tell, um, actors that they can ad lib. We we always encourage the actors to bring stuff to their character, but a lot of them want to say like Jesus, right? They go like oh, Jesus Christ, and you're like, <laughs> okay, on Sarah we'd have don't. There's no Jesus, you know, like that's not a good one. Or even like an older <laughs> like uh, one of our older Hoffman actor will sometimes or uh, Dizzy will they'll, they'll use Merry Christmas as a swear, like ah oh. oh, Merry Christmas, and you're like no Christmas on Sarah, like that's not a good one, you know. So it's funny things where you have to like hey like. That's a little too earth like based, so your ad lib, we have to f find another ad lib. Do they have holidays on Sarah? They do have holidays, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, that was one of the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that was one of the things we have to do. That's not, <laughs> that's not really a holiday. It's, 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 it's an occasion. <laughs> it is an occasion, yeah. yeah is well, so, that one yeah. of the um, blank spaces we can fill out soon? Yeah, holidays. exactly. Holidays on Sarah, the holiday calendar. Yeah, do they yeah. have a, a photo album? <laughs> dating, dating. So he's like it's like the different holidays on Sarah yeah no but it's things, stuff like that where you have to go like because we say like things like you know um, god damn it is one of the things that people say all the time so we always have to go like okay there's we're not there's no the god but there are gods or you know there's a god like thing you gotta that lay you can, all that stuff out right you do like say like okay what, what's in bounds what's out of bounds right in terms of uh, what you can say and so it's been interesting and even when we're working with the novel writer um he'll like you'll start using earth animals and things like that and it's just it was actually kind of funny because it it's actually how i named the new pistol actually because i don't think cliff had a process like i if now that now that i now that i'm doing it like now that i'm the one naming stuff like i and i i come to it like going like i want a method there should be a method to the madness like yeah. hey how does one go and name a vehicle how does one go and name a weapon <laughs> right and so and so i'm trying to, but then as i started to look you know to the past to inform the future i'd go like no, this makes sense. Like this just doesn't make sense. I don't understand. Like why is the, the vehicle called an armadillo? Like that's an earth animal. Why would we do that? <laughs> and then he's like, and the tank's called a centaur, which is a mythological creature. And then the pistol's called a gorgon, which is another mythological creature. Like <laughs> this doesn't make. And so as you try to apply rules to inform the new ones, I would be like, I don't think Cliff had rules when he was making this stuff up. So when we get to so now we're at we're you know we're getting close to shipping and we haven't named the the machine pistol that we have in the game the, and 
So I was like, okay, well, like, we were searching and searching for a name, and I was like, okay, well, apparently, like, mythological things are in bounds like, for some reason. <laughs> I still don't know why, but it, apparently they are. So let me, like, I'll take, so if it's a machine pistol, let me just see if there's a myth, what's a mythological machine? So I, I go search this, uh, you know, mythological machine, and you find out there's this, there's this clockwork kind of guardian called the Talus, and the Talus is this machine that would roam around the island and stuff, and I'm like, hey, Talus is kind of interesting. And then we go like, but the Talus is also known as a Talon, and I was like, well, the talon is perfect for the, because the arc of the pistol looks yeah. like a, it's a claw, yeah. you know, or has, is a talon. And so we were just like, oh, this works really well. And so by going through machine into <laughs> Greek mythology, back into like animal, we were really called it now the talon pistol, which is all because I was like, why do we use mythology? I don't know, but we'll stick with it. Uh, it's made part of the holidays. No, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You mentioned, you mentioned Cliff, obviously. Uh, he's uh, seemingly happily retired now out, mm. of, out of the industry. But you know he still obviously cares about gears. Do you do you check in with him at all from time to time? No, he's he, he's enjoying life in uh, North Carolina Good for and him. busy shipping. So yeah, no. I mean, I I, I I see an occasional tweet from him, but it's not. We don't really like. Well, when we run it, well, it was more when we ran into each other at industry things. So like yeah. last year, you know, an E3 that he was at or something else. But because he's in North Carolina and I'm in Vancouver, we don't really, and he's not doing game stuff right. anymore. We don't really see each other very much. So there's an occasional tweet, but other than that, not much. You don't fly over there and hang out every <laughs> once in a while. He wants to send me his jet. I'm happy to ride in it. He's <laughs> got that, got that Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so. This might be this is sort of random random aside here, but I've I said this recently on the podcast too. I I don't think Gears actually gets enough respect for how good it is and how consistently good it's been over the years. Like, you know, when you hear about uh, a God of War or a Halo, it's like you know these are just like everybody knows about them. They're revered. Right. I feel like not enough people. <laughs> And I know you have, a, and that's not to speak ill of your community at all. You have a thriving, yeah, passionate awesome. community. But I just feel like it, the gears should be, should be like on an even higher pedestal than it is. Do you, I appreciate that. Do you that. carry around any kind of like little chip on your shoulder, or do you just like for motivation? Or <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or uh, no, I'm just sort of curious. Like, you know, you're super close to it, and I'm right. not. Right. I mean, I am as a player, but and as a media person, but you know, do, do you agree with me at all? Or do you, no, I I think there's. I think it's a mixture of things. I think that's one of the things when we tried to transition the characters a little bit was that I think there was a, I think Gears, with its reputation of uh, some people started calling, you know, it became this dude bro game and, and which we found actually when, when we did the beta tour for Gears 4 and we were traveling internationally, we found like dude bro actually to them was just American. They were just like, this is, a very, this is a very American game, like as opposed to like, you know, it's not necessarily a frat boys thing. They just meant it was a very American game. Yeah. Um, but... So the notion of like, I think it was one of those things that was kind of easy to take shots at because of the way that we do certain things. We can be cheesy at times and we can be, that's one of the things I love about our franchise is that we go from comic book humor and action to make you cry at the death of a, the euthanization of a character's wife. You know what I mean? Like it's, so like not many franchises have that sort of within their wheelhouse that they can, their permission to go there and we, we do. So yeah, I mean, but I think the thing that I look at is that I look at what's the full package. You know, when I look at Gears 5 in particular, you know, when you say, oh wow, look, I mean, look, God of War, which is an amazing game that I finished, the, that's like, you know, whatever, six years of people on campaign only, you yeah. know, and, and we've got like campaign plus horde plus versus plus escape plus map builder with a smaller team than they had, right? So when I look at like, how do I think about it? I think about like, what are we offering in terms of replayability and the things you can go do and trying to just do campaign versus campaign or battle royale versus our versus or whatever I feel like those are kind of unfair comparisons in some way um, but I, I I just like what we're building I love the franchise obviously I've been with it for 15 years or on and off for 15 years um, and you know I'm not so worried about like where uh, we are. I just want the fans to love what we're building and play. Yeah, I know you can't control it, right? It's no, <laughs> and it's fine. Like at certain points, you know that once you get up to the number five, unless you're doing a complete reinvention, like you know that you're probably not going to be up for any of the award because you go to like AIAS and it's going to be all the new things, right? It's going to be. Uh, so you just have to go like that's fine. Like we know what we are. We have our passionate fan base. We have millions of people who play it and love it and get tattoos. And so I'm just like, I'm ha I'm happy to serve that customer base and. At the end of the day, too, like you have, one of the things I've recognized is as, as a hard M game, 
that has chainsaws on your guns. Like there's a natural ceiling there that you're not going to hit the 12 year olds that yeah. Fortnite has hit. And so you have to be okay with that. And I am. And, and it was, I was actually really inspired by, we did a esports event in Las Vegas and uh, they were doing, and it was with Caesars and they had their, this, their big esports or their big studio out back in their tent. They film TV shows and stuff. Yeah. In. But so we were there and I've got to meet with some of the executives from Caesars and they handed me his business card and he had on the back of the card, it said where adults go to play. And I kind of felt like that's maybe a great way to think about how I think about the Gears franchise. That like, it's more about this is an adults game and I'm yeah. not so worried about trying to chase the 12 year olds. You know? So when you're done with Fortnite, and you've you're, you're when age you turn eighteen, <laughs> come on over. When you turn eighteen, exactly come to Gears of War. I played Gears when I was eighteen years old for the very first time. Uh, yeah. Escape. So let's uh, let's. You're not here for your health. You're here to sell a video game. You're talking about Escape Road right now. Yes. Uh, where where did the idea for Escape come from? Uh, Escape actually came from a prototype that we were working on in Gears Four, and so it was something we knew kind of going in. Even when we were doing Gears Four, it was like. How do we take what's great about Horde and just and flip it on its head? Like in and, and so Horde is, you know, it's five people. It's kind of like a raid in Destiny. Uh, I'm trying to keep it relevant to you. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> it's oh sort of the, one of these ideas, like a jetpack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's you know, it's sort of like a raid. It can take multiple hours. It's very defensive focused. Um, and we were just feeling like that. Is there a way to kind of, you know, whatever says, like, hey, I'm about to go out for dinner. Like, I got dinner in an hour, but why don't we just do a quick hoard before we, right. you know what I mean? So it's like one of those things you like, you tend to have to settle in on a Saturday kind of thing for the most part. Um, and a lot of people love it, and, and I'm one of them. But we're like, is there a way to make a bite sized version of that? And that's what we, we started working down that path in four, and, and just because it was our first time making gears and we kind of had to focus on the core, um, yeah, we decided to table it. And so when we came to five, that was one of the first things we fired back up. And... Uh, and then it was just that, put hey, put it back in the hyperwave. Put it back in the hyperwave. <laughs> uh, and you're going to make that survive somehow. Um, <laughs> going for it. <laughs> every, every episode going for He's it. got his BAM, Ready. you've got your hyperwave, yeah, we're it's going to be great. We're doing it. I'm getting I need a catch made catchphrase. Damn it, I don't have hype, a catchphrase. Hype phrase. fire t shirt. Do you have your catchphrase? Which and, yes, yeah. Hyperwave t shirt. What is it? Yeah, anime. That's my old show. I used to run an anime show. So okay, good. Like, okay, anime. BAM, hyperwave, yeah, anime. <laughs> I feel really left out. Anyways. That's true. Yes, true. And now I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. Uh, uh, making a bite size. Taking a bite. So, so to find, what's bite size horde? And so we were like, okay, one, let's make it fewer people, so you don't have to try. Hey, how do I find four friends online who want to play? Because generally, if you play with randos, you want to play for fifty. They want to play for ten, and so you get angry that you lose them part of the way. It's yeah, part of the reason. I, I think that's the reason raid doesn't have matchmaking, is because they, you, if you're going to commit, you might, you got to bring them with you. Yeah. Right? Which is good and bad. I've never played a raid because I can't find five people who want to do it at the same time I want they to. They tried it. It didn't go great. We right. have some okay. people here who can help you out, by the way. Okay, good. You need that. Because um, uh, I'm still playing Disney too, but I just haven't, I can't, haven't, <laughs> I haven't done raids. Okay. Uh, I heard you might know a little bit about that. Anyway, uh, so this idea of like, hey, three people, and instead of being defensive and building fortifications and holding up, it's actually, oh, there's this poison cloud chasing you out through the monster. So now you have to go forward, not backwards or you know, stationary. And because you're trying to get out through a smaller space, it only takes about 20 to 30 minutes. And so this idea of like, oh, it's this aggressive horde. So it's still cooperative, you know, but it's aggressive and shorter duration means you can you know, have a similar experience, but in a kind of, again, the photo negative of it or the... Uh, flipping it. And so that was kind of the, the birth of it. And then, and it's really changed a lot of what we do because of the way that it's almost a little campaign-ish because you you are moving through spaces and it's not like Horde where it's just a multiplayer map. Like right. it has its own environments that you're playing in. And then as we started to build it, we were building it through a tile system because one of the reasons we wanted to build it as a tile system is that we wanted to be able to make a lot of hives quickly. Sure. Because we want to create this sort of like, you know, on a regular basis, release new hives all the time. And so it's not like, oh, it come three hives in the box and that's it. It wasn't that. We wanted to be, that's part of our, our live sustain is going to be like, you know, our aspirations are weekly, but I'm, and so you see me when every time I pause is because I'm trying not to say weekly, so I say regularly. <laughs> but so we'll figure out what the right cadence is for yeah. the team and for the community. But you know, our aspirations are to try to do it very frequently to have a new hive to go play. And then our hope is that with once we started building with tiles, we're like, hey, if we can build with tiles and we're clicking them together, why can't the community do that? And why don't we make this tool available to the, to the community to go and make their own? And so now using Map Builder, they can build hives. And we're kind of hoping that we start getting where it's some of ours and some of theirs that we can start featuring on a very regular basis. Miranda, you made probably one of the first 
First one's outside of Microsoft and the Coalition. Yeah, I made it really mean. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to you have to you have to finish, you have to play it and run it before it can be official, right? Before it can, it yeah. can be real. Yeah, well, because we didn't want people just to make like impossible ones and have and so it, as a new player, you go and like, oh, I want to go play a community one and they're all impossible because <laughs> you know that would be what you, how you would troll the, you know, if you could. And so this idea of like you have to finish it, you you have to master your own hive is important so that like then you can go out and other people can try to master it. I like what? to think that it's a way to show off as well. It's like, oh, look how hard this is. I beat it, so you need to be able to beat it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, Ge nice. Gears of War is an eSport. You do a lot of competitive gaming. Do you yeah. see this mode ever evolving into that space? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. It's not on the top of mind right now. Like right now, like with what we're doing with July, we're getting ready to do like here's the next version of Escalation, which is our esports mode, and the way that we're on E League now. So getting yeah. national television, you know, it's it's been trying to really grow that community and seeing where that's taking us. Because I always talked about Ultimate Edition was us crawling because it was a remaster of Gears One. It didn't really have anything to support esports. It didn't have good spectating features or really anything other than the game. Yeah. And then, so, Gears 4 was meant to be our walking phase with now, okay, we're building spectating tools and ways of managing esports, we're building relationships with tournament operators and with uh, esports organizations. And so now, like, I, I'm not willing to, you know, say we're running yet, but I'm saying like we're, we're tying up our running shoes, we're trying to show that we can, we can get there and, and, and you know, be a, have a, be a meaningful eSport, at least within our community, that people can actually make money. And if you watch the thing that I love about the E-League, it's about the stories of the players. It's not just like highlight reels of like, here's the best, you know, gameplay. It's actually about, here's this person who, you know, maybe struggled when they were younger and they found, you know, an ability and a talent in a particular game that's now afforded them to go and buy a house for their mom or whatever. You know, like, there's these things that you watch these stories which is really impactful to me because it's more than just a game to them. And this is where I want us to go. And so I'm, I'm hoping that with five, with the changes we're making and the investment we're making, that we can push it even further. By the way, don't you mean roadie run? What? Yes, roadie run. Yes, I mean roadie run. <laughs> stay on brand here, Rod. Yeah, that's the other hard part. Is like when we use with the, so we, in the boot camp, we have to talk about things that like roadie run and SWAT turn, which exist in our world but doesn't exist in Sarah. So the things that we have to say is like learn how to sprint. And then in the text says roadie run, but it's like go to the sprint trench, and then it's like do a swap cover as opposed to a SWAT turn. Like it's really, we always have to think about this stuff. Uh, the th other, and then the other thing I thought was really interesting about Escape is it's. It's uh, designed to be, I don't know if it's necessarily if you'd agree that it's designed to be difficult, but it's, it's so highly customizable and not just the, the tile sets. That was what I learned when I sat down and I had all these modifiers in front of me. Yeah. So like no two matches are necessarily the same. Right. So we have, you have eight difficulty levels in a hive and the difficulty levels are created by adding difficulty modifiers. And each hive can have its own set of eight. So there'll be a pool, and then I don't think that we've set locked the entire, like whether it's 12 or 15 or 20 or whatever, but you'll, when you build it, you'll pick eight modifiers that set the difficulty for it. Um, and it's really about these two ideas. One is the idea of mastering. So can you actually get through the hive on the highest difficulty? And then once, you, then it's about once you've proven mastery, then it's about speed runs. And so what actually gets logged to the leaderboards is your time. And so on the lower difficulties, like on beginner, there's a huge time penalty. Like you, you're not going to be that far up the board if you just do it on beginner. Yeah. But, but once you get to master, there are no penalties. Like your time is your time. Like so, if you did it in six minutes, it's six minutes or whatever. Um, and so that's where you can place. And then as we do regular intervals, you'll they'll, they'll look at the X percentage, top X percentage on the leaderboard, and they'll all get custom content that'll be like, hey, you mastered this hive and you were the fastest, so here's you know exclusive content for you. Um, and so that's kind of this feeding into this sort of like I shortened it to get good then get fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's, and, but that idea of the eight modifiers is really something that is really interesting because it's not about like, it, even, even though we have sort of four, three basic and then um, four advanced because one of the difficulties is no modifiers. Um, it, the difficulty is based on how many, not the order. So it's not just has to be in a certain sequence. So if you wanted to play, say, on intermediate, that's one modifier. It can be any of those seven. It doesn't have to be in this particular order. And that's such a nice thing too because it lets you learn how how you're, or what you're having challenges with, right? Like, mm. what is stopping you from overcoming the next modifier? 
right? right. And then you can kind of like switch it up and like see like where your weaknesses are with your team and mm -hmm. how you can move forward faster. So it's yeah. like that weird strategy of like, how can I be better at this by like shifting around like what's challenging me? Right, and if, if this particular modifier, like if the fact that the enemy is now regen health is what's blocking you, and if you turn that off and you can do it, then you can figure out, okay, what's, how do we deal with this modifier yeah. in a particular way, right? Um, when, when, you're, when you bring a new mode online like that, and you said you prototyped it during Gears 4 and had to, had to put it on the shelf for a while, yeah. is it like, because uh, I, I listen to interviews with, with like all-time great musicians, and a lot of them, a common theme seems to be like their greatest songs come to them like that. And right. like, you wrote the song in 20 minutes. Does, does a mode like a new cool mode like that come together real fast and you know like you, you just know wow we've got something here or or is is the process more of just an, an iterative thing to get it from an idea to a really super fun thing uh, I think you get both I think I don't think because it's prototyping a lot of it's iteration and yeah. so especially when you're dealing with progression systems where that's even harder because now you're dealing with an in-game economy in terms of like experience points and if I'm giving you skill cards that you're earning how what rate of the skill cards being earned so that'll change how quickly you can move up through the modifiers and so finding like so getting the, the nugget of an idea kind of can come pretty quickly but then the way that you actually successfully ship it is takes a much longer period of time. Uh, you're you're sitting here again in front of a camera. Yes. So we have to we have to talk uh, about Project Scarlet. So, <laughs> do we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That, I don't know that we do. Uh, no. And in all seriousness, I'm sort of curious. You know, in 2017, I guess maybe 2016. I don't know. Whenever after Project Scorpio became a, a publicly announced thing. Yeah. You came on our E3 live show yeah. after Gears 4 had shipped, or maybe it was the year it was shipping, I don't quite recall, but, um, and you'd said, you'd said right then and there, like, yeah, we're gonna, we're, we'll support this thing. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll do an update uh, to take advantage of it. So, you know, Gears 5 is out 2019, right. uh, holiday 2020 for Project Scarlet. Uh, can we expect a similar uh, level of support for, for Gears 5 uh, in in uh, holiday 2020 for on the new console, right? Uh, really focused on Gears 5 right now on what we have in terms of Xbox One X and and One S and and one regular, um, and the Xbox One family of devices. <laughs> um, and so that's really what we're focused on right now. I think the I mean I think there's stuff as first party. You could probably make some suppositions about what we would not do, but I think it's too early to talk about that now. Because that's one of the things I really focused on. Is like okay, we're you know, September 6th slash 10th is coming up super fast. Right. And I want, you know, just I'm, I'm hyper focused and the team's hyper focused on this right now. So it'd be too early to talk about it. You were clearly trained on that one. <laughs> Good job, PR <laughs> team back there. <laughs> had, them, had them prepared for that one. Uh, a couple more for you before we, we got to actually, we'll let you go here in a few okay. minutes. But, yeah. um, you know, you kind of touched on the Microsoft studio culture earlier. And yeah. that's something that we've heard a lot about over the last year from Microsoft of, yeah. Hey, we're acquiring studios. We're starting new studios. We want to let everybody just be themselves yeah. and do their thing. I talked to Matt Booty about that at E3. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you. You know, yes, you're the Gears studio, but could there come a time, uh, whether it's after this sort of natural arc of Gears wraps up, whenever that's if that's after this game or the next game or the one after that? Right. But you know. Would you guys be able to or, and be interested in doing a new IP, maybe a, a, in addition to Gears at some point? Is that something that could be in your studio's roadmap? Or, or is it, hey, you're sign-on to work at the Coalition, we're, do, we're all Gears all the time? Uh, I mean, I'm, the, it's a terrible answer, but it's just a never-say-never never thing, right? Yeah. I think the, we're the Coalition, and we wanted to brand ourselves around the franchise because we were looking at, like, Turn 10, and we were looking at 343 and going, okay, these are dedicated studios to a dedicated franchise. Um, and so we are very dedicated to the Gears of War franchise, but that's not to say we won't do other things. I think when I signed on in 2014, we, I had no idea we were gonna do a pop-based mobile game, <laughs> right? And so I think as we look beyond, you know, one of the things about keeping key creative talent is you potentially wanna go and do other things creatively. So, but right now it's really, it is all Gears all the time. And, and the fact that we're able to go to all the different places with comic books and novels and movies and three different games, like it, it's a lot. So I don't like the idea of like, hey, I, I'm, I laugh and I mean, I enjoy the passion, but I laugh when people go like, so you're gonna remaster Gears 2? And I'm like, 
really busy right now. Like I, I, I really appreciate your love for Gears 2, and I love Gears 2 as well, but I just don't have the time right now. So well, I do like hearing that you at least leaving the door open, and you didn't. You could have sat here and said, "Oh yeah, no, we're the Gear Studio, and that's all we're ever going to do." So I think because I think you you hit on it as as gamers, we sit here and go. Uh, I mean, we're not developers, but we go, man, it, it, even if you sign on to it, it must be a little uh, creatively stressful at times to just know you're only making <laughs> the same franchise all the time. So just to even hear you say, like, yeah, the door is open, never say never, that's nice to hear. Yeah, I think there's pros and cons. I think one of the things that if you find with designers is that constraints are helpful. And so I think if you hand somebody a blank page and say, what, what would you do? And you have no fandom, nobody knows about it, nobody cares about it, and you don't know what you're starting with, versus, hey, here's a franchise with millions of fans, and that, all that means is that at least here's some of the rules. Like, that actually can help propel you to do even more interesting stuff. So to me, what I'd rather do than trying to pivot and do something different is to try to find a way to take all that creativity and put it into Gears and, yeah. and, and somehow stay true to it while finding things like Gears Pop and Gears Tactics and even within the main game, what can we do that could still feel like part of the Gears franchise but is interesting and, and creative. Fair enough. Uh, last question I have for you is, you know, speaking of the new studios, yeah. all the new acquisitions from Microsoft, I know you've had Studio Head Summits. There are pictures on social media from E3 <laughs> yep. of all of you at dinner. No party like first so, party. So, yeah, pick <laughs> who is the most fun new Studio Head to hang out with. Pick a favorite. You have to. They're all, you have to, they're all they're No, all fine. you got to pick some. Well, I mean, the obvious one would be, say, Schaefer, right? Well, that's, uh, and that's where and, I thought you'd like, say he's right down the street. He's right. literally like three blocks from here. Yeah, Tim's great. Uh, but they're all great. Actually, when I when I and when I, my tweet when I announced that I was taking over Xbox Game Studios because Matt Booty had died due to Snatcher Attack, um, which by the way went way bigger than I expected because Phil retweeted it and I didn't know he was going to do that. And I didn't know that when people have alerts on Twitter, they get only the first sentence of the tweet. So oh. everybody from who oh no. oh no, so everybody from Phil's Twitter account saw. I regret to inform you the passing of Matt Booty, and she, everybody was. I got a bunch of like, uh, not cool, dude. And I'm like, I didn't know Phil was going. To retweet this. Um, it's a photo. It's a good yeah, exactly. <laughs> Joke. But the, the, the great thing about that particular moment is Brian Fargo, the studio head of In Exile, was really quick to tweet, like, I, I look forward to serving our new overlord, Gears Viking. Uh, and I was like, this is sweet. And of course, then, you know, Matt went after him. We're like, what the hell, dude? I wasn't like dead for like 10 minutes. You're already pledging allegiance. Body's not even cold. Yeah, exactly. So then he started pulling the Jon Snow and he was back from the dead. And I said, I still have dragons. You know, so. Brian Fargo. He's a keeper. Um, all right. So before we're going to do, we're running out of time, but we let's play a little trivia game. We do listeners send in trivia every week. Okay. And it's it's totally for fun. Uh, we do keep we keep track all year, and then a, a fan makes a, a a trophy out of an old Xbox peripheral. Nice. So Destin's got two of those trophies on yes. his desk. Yep. I think Brandon Tyrell's got the other one, so this is like our fourth year doing it. So you know, you're you're playing just for fun here. Of course. Is that, well, yeah. you're welcome to come back no, every single week. Yeah, no. I, when I when I, when I listen to you guys, I generally get it wrong. So I, figured, <laughs> yeah, I probably will so, be here. So uh, this is I, what's weird about this is I actually picked this for last week's show, and we ran out of time. And it is serendipitously perfect for this because it's a gears question. Oh God. So you're gonna go last. <laughs> okay, but if I get it wrong, it's gonna be really embarrassing. Really embarrassing. Yeah. Zach Shipley, thank you for writing, uh, sending your question in his gamer tag. If you'd like to make a friend on Xbox Live, a new friend, fake trout, all one word. Uh, or gears viking, by the way, all one word. Just saying, I <laughs> yeah. could be your friend too. Friend him as well. So uh, Zach asks the following, Gears of War 3 was not announced at E3, but had a TV premiere in April of 2010. What show did Cliff Blazinski make an appearance on to announce Gears oh. of War 3? All right, he sounds looks he like got it. So looks like Rob's got it. So I hope uh, was it the Daily <laughs> Show with Remember this is Cliff. This this mm -hmm. is anything is in play here with okay. Cliff. So uh, <laughs> the Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Yeah. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. Attack of the Show or the Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien. You know, there's that window of time there where Conan had the Tonight Show. So uh, I'm going to go Destin's way first. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> I'm so uh, bad at this. I'm like, every time we do these with dates, I'm like, okay, how old was I? What was I watching? What happened then? I'm going to say, uh, see Attack of the Show. 2010, was Jon Stewart still doing the Daily Fix? And had Jimmy Fallon started? It's kind of a gray area in my memory. But uh, You just I'll jumbled say, everything into one. I'll like, say, like, I know Conan right O'Brien right was still going or getting kicked off of his show at that time, but I'll say see Attack of the Show. All right. Yeah. Miranda, you have an idea on this one? 
No. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to go with C because it's the one about video games, which I you think is probably going to be wrong. Okay. All right. Fair I'm enough. It's been a long fun with Dustin. It's fine. Sorry, you guys. I'm still bad at trivia. The correct answer here, Ron? It's B, Lightning with Jimmy Fallon. It is. It Jimmy was. Fallon, okay. a, a big time gamer himself. He's had Miyamoto on, he's right. had a lot of. A lot of video game makers on. Yeah, it was Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. So, uh, Rod gets the only point of the week, and also his integrity he gets to walk out of here. I wish I had my integrity, but... It's but, uh, Rod... Trace. Is, that, is that it? <laughs> oh, no. We're just dropping stuff. It's all going haywire. But, uh, Rod, I want to sincerely thank you on behalf of uh, the Unlock team here for coming in, uh, flying down from Vancouver when you have a video game to finish. But you came do. down here to, to talk to us. So seriously, thank you. It's uh, we don't get to talk super often every no. three years or so. I but that's, I do. That's your fault, not mine, by the way. <laughs> that's true. Well, we're, we're talk I'm only interesting game. to you every three years, apparently. That's, that's a... not true. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. Well, now you've got there, there are two other games in the that's works, true. so let's talk more often. Yeah. But yeah, appreciate you coming on and just talking gears. You know, we we love the series. We've I've always loved it. We've always loved it. Mm. It's just been been so much fun for. This is, year, well, 13 years now since uh, the first one shipped. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I started in January 2005 is when I started on Gears wow. of War. So it's, yeah, we're coming up to 15 years. It's going to be crazy. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for coming in. September 10th yes. is the release date for Gears 5. If you pre-order uh, or you play the first week from September 6th to the 16th, you'll get the Terminator character pack. Includes the T-800 and Sarah Connor voiced by Linda Hamilton. So, nice. Which I'm going to go record t day after tomorrow. <laughs> so it'll be super exciting. But yeah, having the and a bunch of customization content around the movie as well, Dark Fate. Fantastic. Did it did it burn you when uh, you saw Ghost Recon had a Terminator thing? Did you know about that? I did not know. Right, that. you probably <laughs> would. Like, it's, they're, they're not going to give you the courtesy heads up on that, right? No, exactly. <laughs> hey, I'm just, I, all I'm going to say, Linda Hamilton, Sarah Connor. Said, <laughs> like, Show me that. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Ubisoft. Yeah. No, Ubisoft's a block away. They probably heard that. <laughs> Um, Where do you think we're going after that? <laughs> right over there. Yeah. We are going to walk by there for lunch, but oh, okay, uh, nice. no, it's fine. Uh, no, Rod, thanks so much. So September 10th, or and then, of course, Game Pass. And Game Pass subscribers yeah. play it on September 10th with your Game Pass subscription. Yeah, or and if you're Game Pass Ultimate, you can play on September 6th. Perfect. And again, that's like, the reason for the and If you play the first week, you get access to the, is for the Game Pass subscriber. So if you're going to get it at retail and you pre-order, you get Terminator. But if you play the first week from 6th to the 16th in Game Pass, you'll get it as well. Fantastic. Uh, Rod Ferguson, the studio head at the Coalition Gears 5, shipping September 10th or September 6th, depending on uh, how and when you choose to interface with it. Uh, thanks so much, Rod. And this was Unlock 399. We'll see you guys next week for a not nearly as special as this episode 400. <laughs> and that'll be 401 because this is 400. This is 400 now. <laughs>